Cooking with Tan. Friends recipes. Number one, Tom's Lamb Rogan Josh. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm guesting on Tan's YouTube channel, Cooking with Tan, and I'm cooking the best Lamb Rogan Josh you've ever had. I'm using lamb neck fillet, which will be cooked slowly so that it melts in the mouth. The dish also contains peppers, tomatoes, green chillies and cashew nuts and will yield four servings. There are four phases involved in creating this dish. Marinate the lamb, slow cook the lamb, make the curry sauce base and bring everything together and serve. While the phases have to be executed in a sequential order, you do not need to start the next phase immediately after the previous one finishes so you can plan your cooking around any other activities. Phase one, marinate the lamb. I'm making a marinade using four tablespoons of rapeseed oil, two teaspoons of turmeric, one teaspoon of hot chili powder, and a good grind of black pepper. I'm using 600 grams of lamb neck fillets. I trim them myself so I can control how large the pieces are. I cut them into cues of approximately five centimeters in size. They are likely to shrink during the slow cooking process so I don't cut them too small. Put the lamb cubes into the marinade, mix until each cube is covered and leave for at least two hours, but preferably covered in cling film and left overnight in a fridge. Phase two, slow cook the lamb. The lamb is cooked in a braising liquor. To make it, I use around 500 grams of small onions. Four onions is usually about right. It's important to leave them whole and not to chop them, but remove any brown outer skin and, with a very sharp knife, shave off a small piece of the root end so that it's clean. Peel four cloves of garlic and crush them with the side of a knife. Bring 700 millilitres of water to the boil in a pot. Add the onions and the garlic and one heaped teaspoon of salt. In a hot frying pan, I lightly brown the cubes of marinated lamb meat. I don't use any oil. I do a batch at a time and then transfer them to the pot. If I put them all in the pan at once, the pan will cool down and instead of colouring the meat, I'll just be drying it out. When all the meat is lightly browned and transferred to the pot, I deglaze the frying pan with 100 millilitres of water and transfer that to the pot too. Put a lid on the pot and place in the centre of a preheated oven, 170 degrees centigrade, 160 degrees fan. After 30 minutes, I turn the oven down to a low setting so that the liquor is barely bubbling. After a further 30 minutes, i.e. after the pot has been in the oven for an hour, I remove the onions from the pot and keep them to one side. This is why I don't chop the onions. When all the onions have been removed, I stir the pot gently and return to the oven. Every 45 minutes or so, I check the pot and give a gentle stir before returning to the oven. I adjust the oven temperature if and as necessary. Remember, the contents need to be bubbling very, very gently. After four and a half hours total in the oven, remove the pot. Gently remove the cubes of cooked lamb and keep to one side. Whatever you do, don't discard the braising liquor as we need it for the next phase. Phase three, make the curry sauce base. 
When sufficiently cooled, decant the braising liquor into a large jug, leaving any sediment behind in the pot. Skim off any residue and excess fat from the surface. Peel 30 grams of ginger and finely slice it. Add the reserved onions to a blender and also add 500 millilitres of the clean liquor. If there is less than 500 millilitres, the difference can be made up with water. Finally, add the sliced ginger to the blender and blend for one or two minutes until the blended mix is smooth. Okay, now we're going to make the base of the curry sauce. Plug of oil, two tablespoons. One teaspoon of turmeric, two teaspoons of hot chili powder, and two teaspoons of paprika. of the onion. Two tablespoons of tomato puree. That's one. That's two. Of the onion mixing. Bring the wok to the boil and then reduce the heat and simmer gently for 15 minutes. This is the base of the curry sauce. Phase 4. Bring everything together and serve. I've cut three tomatoes into quarters, roughly chopped two red peppers and finely chopped two green chilies. I've also measured out a handful of cashew nuts. Bring the base of the curry sauce to the boil. Add the peppers, tomatoes, green chilies and the cashew nuts and heat through until everything is boiling again. Carefully add the cooked lamb. The cubes of meat will be delicate, so don't be too rough with them. Heat through and then reduce the heat to a simmer. We now add the rest of our exotic spices. We don't put these particular spices in the sauce too early, otherwise the flavours would get cooked out. Add no more than a quarter of teaspoon of ground fenugreek, one teaspoon of garam masala, 
and one teaspoon of cumin powder. Stir gently into the sauce. Taste the sauce to see if any more seasoning is required and then allow to simmer for two or three minutes. Now finally, I've, uh, I've mixed, I've got a carton of, yog of ordinary yoghurt I've given it a mix and measured out four tablespoons and, and again mixed it to make sure nothing's separated in it. And I could add that to the curry now, but it might split. So instead, I'm going to add some of the sauce. I've already got the yoghurt to room temperature. I'm just going to add some of the sauce to the yoghurt to warm the yoghurt up. Then I'm going to turn the heat off. And add the yoghurt. Okay. So this is ready to serve now, served with um, basmati rice, plain naan, onion bhajis, whatever takes your fancy. But there you have it, the best lamb rogan josh you've ever had. Thank you for sharing your recipe, Tom. I can confirm your lamb dogon jaws is absolutely delicious. Alright, Don't forget to subscribe if you want to be informed of other new recipes, whether for myself or my foodie friends. Sawadee See you next video. Cheers.